everyone, and welcome to 1923 Main Street. Home of the Daddy Daughter Disney Travel Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bellobradic. And I'm Amelia Bellobradic. And today, we are going to be talking about some of Disney's best recreational activities, tours, and special events. We're certainly going to talk about our favorite, and I do think they're some of the best. You're yeah. right. And but there are so many tours. I'll just say that on the out front. We're not trying to do any sort of comprehensive review of every possible thing. But yeah. this is gonna this is gonna give you an idea of all the stuff that's out there. And some of our favorites, and if some, you want our opinions. Definitely and some of our not so favorites, Ooh. I think we're gonna throw in at the end if we have time. So hopefully we will. But you know, when people say, What do you do there? Do when you go to parks every single day? I'm not sure I could just get up and the people picture if they haven't been, yeah. that you spend 10 hours a day in the park, sleep, spend 10 hours a day yeah, in the park. Yeah, exactly. Now, some people do that, and I don't recommend you do, even yeah, if it's I, your first trip. And we go a lot, so you might think that that's sort of, oh, we'll go next time, we don't need to spend hours in the park, but really, you're just ruining it for yourself. If By you spending, do. yeah. You're just, just making yourself too tired, it's so you hard want to enjoy, enjoy. It as much. So exactly. these, what we're talking about today are things, some are in parks, but they're outside of the normal uh, rides yeah. and attractions. But some of them are not in parks at all. So, so these, in a way, are to get the Disney magic, but not the park experience. Yeah, this really shows how much there is to do. So let's start with recreational activities. And I think we have three that we're going to highlight today okay. that we enjoy. Well, I really enjoy all of these, but why don't we start with Bike rentals. Oh, right. I love renting bikes. So, yeah, renting bikes at Walt Disney World is a great thing to do. There's yeah. there's all sorts of different areas. So we're yeah. going to highlight a few different ways that we rent bikes. And it's also not like a leader and you're following a bike trail. You you get to decide. You just rent the bike and you it's yours for yeah, the yeah. amount of time. That's a good point. You can just do bike rentals and go where you want to go. So let's start with Fort Wilderness. Oh, Fort Wilderness kind of a classic. campground, yeah, on Bay Lake is a great, like probably just from a, if you just want to rent bikes and see nature and have lots and lots of room to ride around, it's a really good place to rent bikes. And you go to the bike barn up by the Meadow Trading Post, you can rent bikes there and ride all around, stop, you know, at the trail's end, get a drink or an ice yeah. cream, whatever. You can spend a lot of time riding bikes, even if you're not staying there. You and I mean, fun. Grandpa always used to do it too. So you Grandpa probably would special. ride his bike for hours on half days on Pass end. downs for generation. Yeah. So Although I think the half a day bike jeans skipped a generation. With yeah, we don't, <laughs> we, don't, we don't ride bikes for half a day, but don't forget. You don't. Back then in the 70s, there was only the Magic Kingdom yeah, which and the two hotels in the campground. Yeah. So you did spend a lot of time doing other things. And even back then, there was still a lot to do in the parks, but I think people really... Well, there was only one park. Yeah, but there was still a lot to do in the yeah, park. absolutely. But I think many people thought there wouldn't be that much, so they really appreciated some of the other activities exactly. Disney had. So n not number one, but first place for riding bikes, Fort Wilderness. Yeah. Second place, which one do you want to cover? Boardwalk. Oh, the boardwalk. Now, I like the boardwalk area for a specific reason. Not and I don't... I Not don't just know the hotel, the entire boardwalk area. area. And I don't think we, with you, have rented bikes there. No, but I can see how you'd ride a bike there. I much prefer biking to walking. And, and here's what I like about yeah, the boardwalk. You know, there's the regular bikes that we tend to rent, but they also have those Surrey bikes. Oh, those are so fun. You know, fun. they look like a golf cart sort of bike and yeah. everybody pedals. They're sort they're harder to pedal than you think. So you need to cooperate yeah, with you your need family. To coordinate your pedaling. But yeah. the boardwalk because first of all, there's the actual boardwalk area where there's, you know, at night it's nice with street jugglers and food and everything. And it's nice in the day. So it's it's fun for Surrey bikes, I think, around there because it's a bit more compact than uh, Fort Wilderness and our third place that we're going to recommend. But also, you don't forget, you can go off the boardwalk area around Beach Club, Yacht Club area, or in behind the boardwalk towards Hollywood Studios. So there is a lot of ground to cover. But if you just want to do a few hours rental, yeah, I like Surrey bikes fun. there. I think Surrey bikes are more fun in that area than the regular yeah. bikes. So boardwalk's a good spot. And then our third one, probably your favorite. It is my favorite. Is? Saratoga Springs. And this is one of my favorite places to ride bikes for a few reasons. It is a beautiful landscape. It's 65 acres. So it's we're talking huge. about Disney Saratoga Springs humongous. Resort and Spa located across the water from uh, Disney Springs. And I guess it would be the sort of the same idea for Old Key West, but we're going to tell you why we prefer Saratoga for this. Yeah, and I, I like 
I just actually like the layout of Saratoga yeah. and the way the trails are much better than Old Key West. It's yeah. it's more fun for riding bikes than Disney's Old Key West Resort. But mm -hmm. and just walk to Disney Springs. We have an added reason because we yeah. came up with a little game, a challenge. If you're listening yeah. and you want to try it, at Saratoga we do the TGSSTHC. And Why you don't may you be say asking, the words? What yeah. does that stand for? Because it's a very long acronym. Well, my friends, it stands for. The Great Saratoga Springs Pool Hop Challenge. Yes. Now, if you've never been to Disney's Saratoga Springs Resort, it is, like I said, 65 acres, borders Lake Buena Vista Golf Course, but it has five, count them, five different pools. So what we came up with is how fast, we were inspired by the, the Four Parks yeah. One Day Challenge. We thought, okay, how fast can we do all five pools? So what we decided, we made up some rules for this. We rent bikes, and you have to ride your bike. Well, you don't have to. No driving, so you can walk, run, whatever. We ride bikes, and you have to spend one minute in the water at each pool. Yeah. So Do you know what our best time is? It's under 30 minutes. It's in the 21 20s. minutes and 26 yeah, seconds. It's on the blog post at MikeBellabronic.com. If you search it, you'll find it. So try to beat our time and let us know. We'd love to hear it. It's a lot of fun. Cast members loved it too. They said, "Oh, this is so cool!" When we told them, so we've done yeah. it two or three times, and yeah, we've really our first time we were around thirty. We've got it down to twenty-one because we have some secret tips to how now, to speed you up. Might our might want to wear water shoes. They're not a fan of you riding bikes yeah, in flip flops. We got scolded for bare feet on the bikes, but no. it sure helped our. Well, I had bare you, feet. Yeah, that, you. <laughs> let me correct this. You had bare I feet. I got in trouble, but we got a good time out of it. So if you wore water shoes, it'd do the same thing. Anyway, we're not talking about that. But yeah. even if you don't do the pool hop challenge, it's so 65 beautiful acres of beautiful trails. And you got the treehouse villas area, the regular area. There's, It's really fun to ride. I imagine it there. would be more fun than when you're soaking wet. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. So ride, bike rental is a great recreational activity. What's another one? What's our second one of the three we're talking about? Ooh. I love this one. Also at Fort I Wilderness. Think. Yes. Horseback riding. Oh, man. The horseback trail rides. This takes me way back yeah, to the This was one of my too. first real times on a horse. And so, so fun. The Tricircle D Ranch up by the main entrance is Which where... Which it's, it's moved since when we did it. No, so. well, the other one moved down by Pioneer oh. Hall because of their oh, building yeah, reflections. Oh, yeah, we went to the other... That's not where the horse... I just want yes. people to know the actual There's horseback two ride. Yeah. Tricircle There's two There's two Tricircle D Ranch areas. The trail rides are from the one up at the main gate. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of Disney trivia for... A lot of the old timers there. Okay. Before you horseback ride, there are some lockers there where you can stow mm -hmm. your gear, paid lockers. And those lockers are the same lockers that were at River Country. So those are the River Country lockers now being <gasps> used. Yeah, a little, Ooh, bit of, a little ah. bit of Fort Wilderness history for you, folks. Yeah, it's fun to have those lockers, the little tidbits. But you go on about a 45-minute yeah. trail ride. Now keep in mind, this is a trail walk. You are not jumping not anything. You are not trotting. You are not cantering. You are definitely yeah. not gall galloping. You are walking. They take you in a straight line. They uh, match a horse to you and your skill. So whether you're a newbie or experienced rider, it's fun for the whole family. I, of course, as I mentioned mm, in another one, got go. Max. Uh, the, well, his name is Dash, but they yeah, it was he, he Dash. plays Max sometimes from Tangled in the parades at Disney World, and he was a big beast, and he thinks he runs the show. I'm not sure if he's still there, but he was a couple he years ago. He wants to be first. He wants to be first. Of course. I was, me and my yeah. horse were first. And he did not like did that. Just say Dash and Daddy did not yeah. like that. Yeah. Dash stopped to eat trees a lot. But anyway, <laughs> it's really peaceful, a lot of fun. Well, I guess they do match it to your personality. It's great for all ages. They do give you helmets and, you know, all the safety gear. Yeah. So definitely fun horseback riding at Fort Wilderness. Definitely one I would recommend. Oh, of course. I'd recommend all of these. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> They're all different. So yeah, speak, if we're not recommending of, it, then why are we talking about well, it? Well, we're going to talk some we don't recommend. Greats. Yeah, but now, but not now, later. Yeah. But what's our third recreational activity? Oh, this, this one. Is, is this your favorite? Yeah, although I do love both of them, this would have to be my favorite. I've saved the best for last. All right. You get to surf in the Typhoon Lagoon wave pool. This is awesome. Oh, oh my I gosh, it's amazing. I definitely recommend this one as well. Whether or not you've surfed or not, just like horseback riding. Although if you're quite lazy, it might not be for you. So in a nutshell, and I'm going to put in the show notes more details about this that I've written. I did a whole review on it the first time we went. And yeah. what they do in a nutshell, you get to 
uh, Typhoon Lagoon at the crack of dawn. In fact, it's still dark out. 5.30. Yeah, when you get there. And I think the there's, morning. whatever, 20 or 25 people. I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's a small-ish group. And there is an age limit of eight and up. Yeah. And it's about three hours. But basically, you it's so cool because the park's not open. And your small little party has surf instructors from Cocoa Beach. And Ron John supplies the gear. And you get the entire wave pool to yourself. It's, well, you and 25 people. No, but you're not all in at once. Well, they yeah. send you in little groups of two at the most or yeah. one even. Is two. it one at a time? Well, no, you can go in pairs, but if you want, you can go alone. And there's two waves, the you small and one, go together one and the big one. Yeah. And the big one's pretty big. And it, it's it's just hard to describe how cool it is. It's not... It, the buoyancy is a little different than saltwater surfing. So they tell you because it's a freshwater pool, it's a little it's bit not different. It's freshwater. It has chlorine. Well, it's not saltwater. Which means I looked very stupid in my goggles. Yeah. No, you always wear those goggles. I'm, I'm stopping now after I see how I look in pictures. But this is a must do and you're going to yeah. get up, especially if you stick on the small waves. Yeah. it's be- And it does look really cool if you edit the pictures just right. They spend a lot of time uh, teaching you before. It's really good. You're in really good hands. Even if you've never surfed before, trust us. You'll get up even on the small wave, which is sort of like a Waikiki beach wave. But it is sort of a lot of work. Like you do have to get up and be there by 530. Then you have to lug the surfboard all the way from the bottom of the pool back up the top and climb the ladder thing. Yeah, if you're not in shape, (laughs) you might not want to do it. If you're not in the mood for... Or even, yeah, if you're so-so about surfing, don't do it. But do it if you really love to surf and swim. Or if you think it's just a fun experience. It is... It's it's so unique. And you don't have to be great at surfing either. I'm telling you, there's nothing like being in Typhoon Lagoon when nobody's there. And you have that entire wave pool to yourself. And it's not like the H2O glow. Like, it's way... And then there's another benefit that they let us do at the end of it. You get a little certificate and things when it's, but when it's done, they, you know, you're done just before the park opens. So what you get to do, at least we did, was they said, all right, you can go stake out some chairs. So you do have to leave and get back in line with the guests coming in. You can't stay in, but you're basically at the front of the line because they just tuck you. You don't go to the back of the line. They just put you behind the ropes where the washrooms are, change rooms. And But you can put your stuff on some chairs so you don't have to rush to get a chair like everybody else does. You've already got a chair. Yeah. And our little group sort of stuck together last time, so that was sort of neat. We all put our stuff in the same area. But then you can just rush right to whatever you want to do, whatever water slide or wave pool. So surfing at Typhoon Lagoon is a must-do. It's amazing. All right. What do you want to do next? Let's go go tours. Tours. Or we're on the prospect of off-park areas. I think we're only going to talk about one tour in particular, but I will say something. There are two, these guided tours at Disney World, there are so So, many There's so many, and and most of them are amazing. And they change a lot. Like some of the ones we like to do, like the Star Wars tour, I don't think it's running anymore since Galaxy's Edge opened. Yes. But it was really, really good. So if it comes back... Uh, definitely consider that one if you mm-hmm. like Star Wars. And there's a lot of Magic Kingdom tours. Yeah, there's so um, many. There's the Behind the Seeds at Epcot is good. You can't and, possibly do them all. No, you can't. Not Certainly not in one week. Yeah. There's a Day of Thrills tour. There's Nights of Adventure. There's all sorts of them. But we have a real favorite, the one we're going to focus in on oh, today. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the Magic Kingdom, um, Keys to the Kingdom. That's yeah. a really, really good one. There, there's an age limit. That's well, why you I haven't, haven't done, done that. Because I think so. it's 13, I think, or 16. Oh, don't worry. We will but be we'll doing do it. it. Yeah. We'll probably do an entire episode on that. Yeah, it's, it's a, a really great, great tour. tour. But what one are we going to talk about today? Wild Africa Trek. The Wild Africa Trek Kilimanjaro Safari at Animal Kingdom Park. And I would recommend the morning one. Oh, yeah. We went out first thing in the morning. Again, and this is, early bird. Yeah, it's such a great tour. You put on the full gear vest and you're guided behind and off the trails. It's cool. You don't even really need a backpack. You, you're not allowed to bring Yeah, backpack. you don't need anything. <laughs> and also, I would maybe wear like a little jacket too because you can't bring It anything. depends so on I the got, weather. So I got cold because I was wearing a t-shirt. Well, it was a misty, cold. cool morning though. Yeah, but we, we didn't. Went. Yeah, but just I would maybe bring like a small jacket in case it does get cool. And you, yeah, or you, it rained at the end of ours at the at the very end we yeah. were going back. So they do provide you with ponchos. They're pretty good. They provided us with ponchos. Oh Ponch- yeah, it did rain. Ponchos, water bottles. If, if you were cold, I got like a little tablecloth. 
<laughs> yeah, they wrapped Ooh, you in I a have a story cloth. about this one. But they did, they did the tour itself. The first half is walking and the second half is in a vehicle. And you do go behind the scenes. The highlight that everybody loves is the Rope suspension bridge. bridge. It's pretty, it's sort of scary. It's a lot of fun. It goes yeah. over the crocodiles and, you know, you get some great pictures. You can take your own and they take some and they're included. They give those to you. And one of the things that's sort of neat about it is that they do give you a meal. It's like a little... Well, yeah, sort of like a lunch. I don't know. It, it was because we did the morning one. I guess it was yeah. lunch. It yeah, was it towards was the end, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Oh, where was the meal? Oh, I just thought of some. Uh, yes, there's a little. There are no washrooms. This oh. is your only chance <laughs> to go to the washroom on the Wild Africa Trek. They have a little building that you stop in for lunch. And there are washrooms there. But don't drink 20 ounces of Starbucks right before <laughs> the tour. That is my tip. Because <laughs> you will not have a chance to go to the washroom for... Gee, I wonder how we got that tip. It was probably two hours, I'm thinking. Anyway, the meal itself was really cool. Uh, it's by, I forget which chefs from Animal Kingdom do it, but it's really unique with edible flowers, really creative stuff. and Beautiful presentation Yeah, beautiful well. presentation. And um, it's, a, it's a great little spot outside overlooking the savannas. So the Wild Africa Trek is great. And then the second yeah. half, like we said, is in a vehicle, first half on foot. Yeah. So again, definitely, definitely well worth doing. Consider that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and like I said, there's so many other tours. So I just we just want to talk about yeah. that one in this particular. This one you do also get a water bottle to keep as well. Oh yeah, you do get. Is you, that the only thing you get? Well, no, I think it's a nice a stainless steel yeah, Wild and Africa. So you can bottle. bring water. You can you can bring your phone if you get like a waterproof bag or things, yes. but don't. Don't bring an entire backpack full of stuff because they'll make you leave it. And I think you take the vest off halfway through, if I recall. Was that right? Well, yeah, but you keep it with you. Yeah. So the vest is mainly required for... for the walking part. Oh, you get your name tag, too. Yeah. But you, for the, the vest, suspension bridge. The, yeah, too. but... Because that's where your straps are tied. Yeah, so you don't need it after yeah, the walking safety part. straps. Okay, now... Special events. Special events. There's so many different kinds of special events. Yeah. What should we talk about first? So Mickey's two parties, his not so scary Halloween party and his very merry Christmas party. Yeah. So the Magic Kingdom <laughs> special events. Yeah. The very Mickey's very merry Christmas party makes it's not so scary Halloween party. We talked about these in a recent episode, yeah. so we don't have to spend a ton of time on them. But I will just say they're it, fantastic. Yeah. If you're there for either one. I really think you should do it. Do it. It's a lot of fun. If you're going in the summer, maybe go in late August to catch the beginning yeah, we've of done, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. We've done both of these m multiple times. Yeah. And they're great. We really like them. I think we both agreed we like the Christmas party a little bit better. Yeah. And if you're super, super lucky, you can do that week at the end of October, beginning of November, where it is possible to get both, to get both of these parties in one week. So I have not done that, but. That's sort of cool. Depending yeah, there's on, a first time for everything. Yeah, the dates are different every year, but we tend not to go in that week. If we're going to go for Christmas, we go later, like mid-December is my favorite, yeah. up to about the 20th of December mm -hmm. is a great time. But those special parties, I think, are well worth the money. They're a lot of yeah. fun and, you know, definitely get you in the spirit. Now, there are some other things under Ooh. special events. Dessert parties. Let's talk about dessert parties. So dessert parties... I find them sort of polarizing in the Disney community when I'm on Twitter and stuff. Some people just really complain about them. I, I don't, I don't even, get why. I don't even love dessert that much, but I like the dessert parties. I think they're a lot of fun. I think the desserts, we've done, again, we've done a lot of these. They're deceiving. The desserts are so small. Yeah. And then you eat the, just a, too many. Yeah. And then you get full. That's, yeah, that's, well, that's the fun. And they're, <laughs> they're all, deceiving. you know, designed. So one we were talking about the Star Wars the, tour earlier. The, when the Star Wars tour was running, it ended with the Star Wars party. Galactic Spectacular Dessert Party. And that is a really fun dessert party. And, the you know, the Star Wars themed desserts are great. Yeah. I really like it. There's drinks and things. So I definitely would recommend the Star Wars Galactic Spectacular Dessert Party. Another one that we really like is the uh, Happily Ever After Fireworks Dessert Party in the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Now, I'm going to add my take on this. There's two ways you can do it. There's either in the Tomorrowland Terrace or the Plaza Garden. We did the Plaza Garden. And I recommend the Plaza Garden. Yeah. It's got a better view of the castle. 
It's outdoors. Yeah, it's not covered if there's a chance of rain, but there are... They do give you ponchos. They do give you ponchos. There are many obstructed views in the Tomorrowland Terrace one if you're not right at the railing and stuff. I just don't like it. I don't like the angle. The Plaza Garden one outside is more... Beautiful. Yeah, there are people in front of you. You're in that little uh, rope, well, iron Mm -hmm. fenced off area on the grass, but it's 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 a fun... So you do the dessert party first and then they walk you out to that area. Yeah. And if you're like me, you just take a dessert to go. They also, uh, I think they've paired this one with Cinderella's Royal Table now, too. Yes. So dessert parties are fun. We also did the Frozen one. The Frozen one has moved now to Epcot. When we did it, it was still at Hollywood Studios. So that was fun, too. Yeah. Uh, So those are all. Like, if you like desserts and stuff, I recommend dessert parties. Or if you're a taste tester. Or if you're even an Instagram person, yeah, they are beautiful. They are beautiful for that. I like dessert parties, no problem at all. Yeah. So. All right. Let's move on to our best ever Disney recreational activity oh. tour or special event. Okay. So we have a few things in our time left. This one is not happening anymore. No, but, but it, it was is the yeah, best in my ever. life. Yeah. Definitely the best thing I have ever been to at Disney. I hope they bring it back someday. And what was it? This was Club Villain. This ran in the summer of, I think, 2016. Club really? Villain was held at Hollywood it was the, it was Studios. the best thing ever. They have that Cars yeah, Driving cars... Academy or something now. It's it's beside Rock and Roller Coaster, yeah. behind the fence there. And this was amazing. You have to go to my website, yeah. <laughs> MikeBellabratic.com, and if you haven't seen this or look it up. And, the, and it was four We did a whole villains. review on it. Four Villains. Uh, for Dr. Facilier so he the host. hosting. It was so loud, happens. pumping music. I mean, this was a true party. It was an open bar with alcoholic drinks, pre-mixed, and fun kid drinks. And non-alcoholic drinks, That's the first time yeah. I've seen an open bar like that at a... But it was a real party. Like, it was indoors, music blasting, smoke, dancing, four thrones, and you really got fun. lots of time. It was... Uh, who was it? Maleficent. Super kid-friendly. Queen of Hearts, sorry. Maleficent. Evil Queen. Evil Queen. And and who was our fourth? Ooh. Maleficent, Queen of Hearts. Oh, 101 Dalmatians. Cruella. I thought Cruella de Vil. I yes. thought it was because I was thinking that it was three from Descendants, but then I thought, no, it's only two. And the food. There was a full meal. Girl. Like a oh, full yeah. meal. The food was great. And you're at, it's like a sort of a wedding setup. No, they but, do fill every table. Yeah. So we were with, you know, if you don't have a full group, but it's fun. It's a, it it's truly not. was a blasting loud it's party that was nothing like I've been to there before. It yeah. was so much fun and uh, I wish they didn't and, stop it. And you know what's really funny? What? Villains now hold, in both of our opinions and in mom's opinion too, villains hold the best ever activity that we've done and the worst as well. Oh, so we're going to jump into... Villains after hours. Now they have made a few adjustments. So now we're going to, to yes. Yeah, so we're we going to talk about two it. things. We've talked about all things we love. We're going to talk about two things we well, did not particularly enjoy. Okay. So the first one is villains after hours. And this, it just sort of was less than I expected. It wasn't really bad. It was just sort of a paid extra magic hours. Really, yeah, that, there was... That's what it felt like. I think special It was too. like a paid extra magic hours with free, you know, you get free snacks, so popcorn, ice cream, but seriously, how guess, much of that can we eat? Yeah, and there was villains waving goodbye to you. Oh, and the Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm, I'm sorry, it was just not up to par for my expectations well they they were talking about all these live interactive actors and we saw one or two or in the th- line it was really it was just i'm i was over advertised there was really nothing there except you know there was you had to make a choice watch the stage show it's only three hours long so stand there and watch the show or try to go on rides you can't really do both in three hours our haunted mansion broke down so we were stuck on there for at least half an hour yeah. So, but the point was, I when you compare this to the Halloween party or the Christmas party, which have special characters that come out, it was horrible. I, I was shocked that this thing went on like that. And I shared that with Disney. Now, we say all that. They relaunched Villains After Hour 2020, 2019, 2020. Yes. And we, have, we didn't have a chance we to do it. We have yet to experience that. But from what I've read, they've incorporated some of the issues that I was talking about. So... It's supposedly better. better. Not sure I would do it again because it was 
still feels like a letdown compared to some of their other yeah. in parks parties. I'd rather do certain other ones. Yeah, there's certain other ones. That's all there is about. It's just not a lot to talk about because there's not much to do. Now, we have one other thing that we particularly did not like. Oh. And what was this one? I could one? go on and on about this one. The Highway in the Sky Dine Around. So the Highway in the Sky Dine Around is where the monorail takes you. The monorail is the highway in the sky. Yeah. It does the resort loop at the Magic Kingdom Resort area. You start at the Contemporary and you stop at the Contemporary, yeah, the Polynesian, Jim, the Grand Floridian, Meridian, and then back at the Contempt to watch the fireworks at the end of the night at a dessert party. Yeah. Sounds great. Right. But... It, Poorly executed. It is now again. I don't know if they've improved it, but since we did it, but it was, it, you know, the problem is there's just not enough time with yeah. all the people. There are too many variables. So you start at the wave, uh, at the contemporary, and it was just sort of. It just felt disorganized, and we're sitting there in this sort of waiting area and waiting to start, and it wasn't really anything special. And then yeah, you get on the monorail, the Polynesian, and it's like. Sort of little meals, but you're not even, you were just standing up. Sort of, it wasn't really. Yeah, they need to put it somewhere better. We were sort of shoved in the lobby <clears throat> yeah. by the store upstairs. And here's the thing that they didn't account for. If you, depending on who's in your group, we had a couple of um, scooters. Well, the thing about scooters is they take a lot more time on the monorail, you know, which is fine, but it ended up cutting into, you know, it really shortens the time. So they didn't account for, they didn't appear to account for all of the things that could yeah, happen or, with, a, with a group of 20 people. Or, or maybe they was. accounted for it and just forgot or something happened or they just didn't care. No, the one thing that was okay was at each stop, you get a drink and a little food or snack. Yeah. And it, the, the food and drinks, I, as I recall, were all pretty good in each case, but it's just the overall execution. Oh. But where it really, really fell apart for us was when we had our sort at, of main course at, at the Grand Floridian. Oh, this is where it all fell apart for us. Yes. So, do you recall the? And thank goodness there are two stops at the Grand Floridian, and a person at our table knew the itinerary and the and the drinks what we would have. So let's let's say what part. happened. So we get off of the Grand Floridian upstairs and, and this is we this go to Citrico's. We I went think. to Citrico's, yeah. And this is sort of where your main yeah. meal is. And they sort of bunch you with two different groups. So it was uh I wouldn't our say family. bunch you. Well no, okay. <laughs> I mean so, there's twenty five or whatever so there they were. They put you in like three yeah, tables. You're, you're at tables. So there was us and then there was three other people from the dine round and then there was two other groups similar in, at to two this. other tables. Yeah. So we're eating our meal at Citrico's. Yeah, and then the one person from our table says, oh, is there this sort of wine, like sparkling champagne or something? And then he said no, and she was like, oh, I think we have this at the Grand Floridian. And then it started to take a lot. It was, we waited so well, long. Well, here's what happened. Somebody said from that other, our friends from California yeah. that were with us, not our friends, but we met them on the tour. They yeah. said, hey, are the, where'd the other two tables go? Yeah. So they noticed that the other two tables from our group had gone. They'd left yeah. Citrico's. And here we were on this tour. Well, actually, I said that. You didn't listen. Then they said it. Assen and then like, oh. <laughs> Essentially, they left us yeah. behind. So we had to get up, and then we asked our waiter, and they don't, you know, they work at Citrico's. They're going, yeah, they I don't, don't know. know. And so we had to go. And so what had happened is the group, the party, the group, the rest of the group had moved on to the tea room downstairs yeah. to have their second part, which, what was it, dessert? And yeah, it was like this sort of cheese platter oh, yeah. thing. And then there was the wine. So then the girl was like, oh, I think, because she knew, she knew where we were going next. The waiter yeah, didn't even know. the itinerary. It was the girl in our group. Yeah. So. Thankfully. Anyway, Thank so goodness. we go down. There they are, <laughs> enjoying themselves. And at that time, our whole, so one third of the tour is not happy. They basically left us behind. Then we were rushed through that area. Right there, we were saying, this is ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. how can you leave a third of the group? Forget them. Yeah. Like, come on. This was not Seriously. the first running of the Highway <laughs> in the Sky Dine Around either. Yeah. Anyway, and then from there you go to the Contemporary for the last stop. You go out on that little monorail level outdoor viewing area and you have a little a few... You know, that's right. You have cheese at the Grand yeah. and then you have the desserts at the a Contemporary to watch the fire. It was fireworks. sort of a little bit of appetizers and drinks, main meal, cheese, and then... But that was a, 
That's why we played the Tower of Terror music. It yeah. was not a good moment. Uh, not. The, the dine around, it was is too rushed in my view. I don't know if they fine-tuned it. There's too much to do. Maybe if they took out one stop at the Grand Floridian or lengthened yeah. it, whatever. But not a good experience. I mean, I love Disney, almost everything, but I'm not blind when things aren't working well yeah. either. So I always give feedback to them so they can fix them. It's like Villains After Hours. It's not hours. a trained eye. Yeah, and Highway in the Sky Dine Around are, I think, the only two in my entire yeah. and maybe, career and that Disney. And they're not horrible either. They're just not up to Disney standards. Yeah, there's room for improvement in those. Like, you know, you shouldn't leave a third of the group behind. No, <laughs> right? not. That's just basic yeah, on a tour. Just... We just forget about the whole party. Yeah. Anyway... This was another whirlwind tour of recreational activities, VIP tour events, and special events at Disney World. The point is, there's so much to do outside of just typical rides and things in the park. So definitely explore horseback your riding, surfing, all these idea. things. Yeah, and and make you know really expand on your trip. And it, it, even if it's your first time doing these things, it's more leisurely than just pounding the yeah. parks every day. So we hope you enjoyed this. Share with us some of your favorites, if you had good or bad experiences at things and how they could be improved. We always like to do that. Definitely give feedback to Disney because I find they do yeah. actually listen. They are. They're very good about yeah, that. Sometimes they respond. Sometimes they don't. But I see like villains after hours actually started getting changed. And I know I wasn't the only one with these feelings. Other people had the same feelings we did. So it always uh, it's always good to respectfully share yes. your views on how it could be improved. So we hope you enjoyed this episode, everyone. Uh, find us on social media as always in between episodes or if you want to know what's coming up next it's always on the website the current episode and coming up next so 1923 Main Street on social media and 1923MainStreet.com is our home base so thanks for joining us we hope you have a magical day bye bye